Fundamental Counting Principle Lesson Objectives At the end of the lesson, 100% of the students shall be able to attain, at least 80% level of proficiency. The lesson aims to work on the following. First, identify the steps to express fundamental counting principle. And second, solve the total number of outcomes in an experiment, by using fundamental counting principle. As a review, make a tree diagram to show the number of outfits that you can make out of these clothes. This can be illustrated this way teacher. There are eight pairs of outfit that can be made. Very good. How did you get it? It can be calculated by counting the number of arrows or branches, teacher. Exactly. Let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> now, I have here wheels of treats. The first wheel contains the main dish, the second is for the drink and the third is for the dessert. All of them having seven options. Spin each wheel to get a set of meal. Teacher, I will be the first to spin. Go ahead. I got fried chicken, soft drink and candy. That's a good set. Next. I got grilled pork. Coffee and cake. That's a good set too. Last. I got shrimp steak, milk tea and apple pie. That's a good set too. You all got a very mouth-watering set. So, if we continue spinning it all, how many combinations or set, we can get in total? We're not sure teacher. It's difficult to put arrows in each option. Understandable. We will hang it first, for the meantime. Our lesson will give us idea, how to solve this kind of problem. Our topic is all about fundamental counting principle. Fundamental counting principle, is the total possible outcomes for each individual event, that are found by multiplying the number of outcomes or options for each event. It is also called counting a rule, and is a way to figure out the number of outcomes in a probability problem. If you have an event A, and another event B, then all the different outcomes or options for the events are being multiplied. In a simple illustration, if you have an event or variable A, which has options of 3, and another event B, which has 5 options, Multiply the total options for each event to get 15 as total possible outcomes. In case that you have another event C, and it has 7 options, multiply it to the product of A and B to get 105 possible outcomes. And the apply the same process, if you have more events to include. Fundamental counting principle is a 3 step process. The first step would be determining the events or simply identifying the variables in the situation. The second step is determining the number of options for each event. And the last step is, multiplying the number of options for each event, to determine the number of possible outcomes. Let's apply these steps in an example to further understand. I have here a 10, 5, and one peso coin. If I will toss it all, in how many ways they can fall? Let's follow the three-step process of fundamental counting principle and let's present the data in a table format. The first step is determining the events. In this situation, the 10, the 5 and the 1 peso coin are the three considered events or variables. The second step is determining the number of options for each event. And in the case we only have head and tail as options for each coin or simply there are two options. And lastly, the third step, 
is multiplying the number of options for each event to determine the number of possible outcomes. Having said, 2 multiplied by 2, multiplied by 2, to get the total possible ways the coins will fall, which is in 8 ways. To prove if it's correct, let's have all the possible set. All coins in head. All in tail. Only 10 in head. Only 10 in tail. Only 1 is tail. Only 1 in head. Only 5 in head. And only 5 in tail. For the total of 8 possible outcomes. Let us have another example. I have 3 baskets. The first has 2 kinds of cookie, the second has 6 kinds of candy, and the third has 5 kinds of soft drink. How many combinations of cookie, candy, and soft drink can be made? Let's follow again the steps. First, determining the events, and in the case, we have three, the cookie, candy, and soft drink as our variables. Second step is determining the number of options each has, cookies has two, the candies has six and soft drinks has five. The last step, is multiplying the number of options for each event, therefore, two multiplied by six, multiplied by five, that will result in, 60 possible combinations. Going back to the question we hang earlier, how many possible outcomes we can get, if we continue spinning the wheels of treats. Let's do the same process. Step 1. We have three events in the given. The main dish, drink, and dessert. Step 2. Each event has seven options. And step 3. Multiplying all of them, will give 343 possible outcomes. Did you understand, what fundamental counting principle is? Yes teacher. So what have you learned from our discussion? We have learned that, fundamental counting principle, is the total possible outcomes for each individual event that are found by multiplying the number of options for each event. It can be expressed in three steps. First, determining the events. Second, determining the options for each event. And last, multiplying all the options to get the possible outcomes. Very good. Then let's now have our activity. I have here envelopes and each has a problem to be solved. Apply the three steps of fundamental counting principle, to come up with the right answer. I will give you 15 minutes to finish the task, and you will present your answer afterwards. Is the instruction clear? Yes teacher. Let's start. Time is up. Present your work. Problem. A factory makes t-shirts in five colors, four designs, and three sizes. How many different t-shirts can be made? In step one, there are three events, namely the color, design, and the size. In step two, there are five options for the color, four in the design, and three for the size. In step 3, multiplying them all will give, 60 different t-shirts, teacher. Fantastic! Let's hear the next presenter. Problem. In restaurant, you have a dinner choice of one main dish, one vegetable, and a drink. The choices for the main dish are, pork and chicken meat. The vegetable choices are, broccoli and cabbage. The drink choices are, juice and water. How many combinations are possible? In step 1, there are three events, namely the main dishes, the vegetables and the drinks. In step 2, there are two options for each of them. In step 3, multiplying them all will give, eight possible combinations, teacher. Amazing! Next! Problem! A five-item multiple-choice exam 
has three choices for each question. In how many ways can the test be answered completely? In step 1, there are five items to be answered. In step 2, there are three options for each question. In step 3, multiplying them all will give 243 ways to complete the exam, teacher. Very good. And let's have our last presenter. Problem. The math club is selecting new officers. There are three candidates for president. Four candidates for vice president. Four candidates for secretary. And two candidates for treasurer. How many different possible set of officers are there? In step one, there are four positions to be filled up, namely, the president position, the vice president, the secretary and the treasurer position. In step two, there are three candidates for president position, there are four for vice president, four for secretary and two candidates for treasurer position. In step three, multiplying them all will give 96 possible sets of officers, teacher. Perfect. You all really understand our discussion. Give yourselves a round of applause. Do you have any clarification? None, teacher. If there's none, so let's have a short quiz. Choose the letter of the correct answer. Work with this within 10 minutes, and you may start now. Time is up. Here's the answer. Pass you paper. For your assignment, create your own probability problem and use the steps you have learned today. Is the instruction clear? Yes, teacher. Let's end our lesson here. Goodbye, class.